remove the threat of un unemployment, and establish a structure of public service jobs that could fulfill the needs of any individual nation's physical and human infrastructural requirements. So in the context of the United States, and perhaps in Barbados as well, I would propose that you could have high quality child care centers that could facilitate mothers working without worrying about the well-being of their children. You could develop and maintain improved or inaugurate rapid transit systems. You could have computer repair and upgrade work being performed by the employees of the system. You could maintain a more elaborate disaster relief service, something that's clearly needed drastically in the United States. It would be possible to mobilize the employees of the system to engage in school construction, upgrade, and maintenance, as well as the maintenance of parks and recreational areas. In the Barbadian context, I think it would be possible to canvas local parishes to identify a list of socially desirable tasks that have been gone, that have been going unfulfilled that could be handled in such, in such a context. Um, in effect, I'm proposing that you complement the civil service with a public employment service. And I would argue further that there are some very specific benefits to the private sector that would be associated with the establishment of such an initiative. First, you could stabilize expenditures on consumption goods because you could preserve and maintain the incomes of those who would otherwise be out of work. Second, a public service employment program would require a substantial body of materials to conduct its infrastructural maintenance activities, and those materials would be purchased from the private sector. And then third, there would be the possibility of innovatively having cooperative hiring of the public service employees with the private sector, so that there could be a sharing of wage payments across the two, reducing the cost for the private sector. In fact, if anything, deregulation of the financial sector during the Clinton years and subsequently was one of the major factors leading to the destabilizing of our credit and financial markets and contributing directly to the collapse. So I've been an advocate, as you might know by now, of the direct provision of employment to those who are without work. I've argued that what should happen in the United States is the development of a federal job guarantee, a program that would enable every citizen who is seeking a job to find one. And I've also argued that if there are folks who are concerned about individuals' motivation, lack of desire to work, if we had such a program in place, we would find out who really didn't want to work. <laughs> I've advocated this program as one that should be permanent and universal. Uh, however, there are some advocates of a more muted proposal, which still has not been, been adopted by the, the current regime, of a targeted and temporary initiative. So you would target those regions or cities or municipalities throughout the United States that have the most extreme high levels of unemployment and introduce a jobs program, and you might do it through the course of a period where we have an extreme level of depression throughout the economy. But uh, my preference is for a permanent and universal program, but I, I would settle for something less. Um, and indeed, the most interest in this type of job guarantee approach has actually emerged from the US military, where there's uh, substantial evidence of high unemployment among returning veterans, particularly younger veterans, in the U.S. at present, younger veterans, those who are below the age of 24, have approximately a 30% unemployment rate. And this is quite staggering. And so there, there, are, there are some members of the U.S. military who have argued 
that this idea of a job guarantee would be particularly appropriate in that case. Again, this would be targeted, so it would be a narrower program. So then I'm trying to think about what might be some solutions that might be pursued in the South, represented here by Barbados. Uh, the stimulus package program is, is somewhat problematic, although what I'm going to propose will require a, a, an expenditure change or an expenditure shift, as well as an expenditure boost. Uh, but the stimulus, package pro, 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 the stimulus package approach is particularly difficult in, a, in an environment in which expenditure reduction seems to be desirable to maintain foreign exchange stability. Secondly, uh, lowering domestic interest rates becomes a problematic, uh, problematic strategy as well because of, again, the need to preserve stability of the exchange rate. What about deregulation? Well, uh, a study from the Sir Arthur Lewis Institute indicates that actually processes of deregulation, most strongly represented by liberalization measures, have actually been associated with a decline of manufacturing and agricultural activity in Barbados. A fourth approach might be to diversify the economy, to reduce its reliance on the tourist sector. Uh, the question becomes whether or not there is a scale of, uh, of, of opportunities to mobilize the labor force sufficiently to go very far in this direction. So, of course, it would be desirable to be, in some sense, less monocrop dependent, but how far can this be done? So I would propose that there might be consideration of direct public sector employment in Barbados. That this may be an instance where symmetrical policies would be beneficial in both North and South. And I would argue further that Barbados could consider either the permanent and universal program, which is the, the more potent program that I have in mind, or a targeted and temporary program as a means of relief to those who are confronted with the most severe forms of joblessness. 7.4% unemployment rate in 2007 became an 8.1% unemployment rate in 2008, a 10% unemployment rate in 2009, a 10.8% unemployment rate in 2010, an 11.2% unemployment rate in 2011, and an estimated 12.2% unemployment rate at the end of June 2012. A 12.2% unemployment rate approximates one in nine persons in the Barbadian labor force being out of work. Now, in my own state of North Carolina, there is approximately a 10% unemployment rate at the moment, which is one of the higher unemployment rates in the United States, but among the black population of the state, the unemployment rate approaches 20%, which means that one in five black Americans in the state of North Carolina are jobless. This is a very dramatic and difficult situation, in part because of the relationship between unemployment and poverty. Rising unemployment rates typically signal rising poverty rates. Uh, courtesy of uh, Professor Andrew Downs, I was able to get some information about the, the current state of estimated poverty in Barbados. And uh, this, this data is drawn from the survey of living conditions, which uh, involve the interviewing on a regular basis of 3,000 households and approximately 6,600 individuals. Uh, what was learned in the most recent study, which was taken in 2010, that about 15% of Barbadian households are poor, constitutes approximately uh, 14,800 households, and 19.3% of individuals are poor, which would be approximately uh, 50,000 people throughout Barbados. Uh, now, what, what, what's the standard that's used for identifying this poverty line? By adjusting the standard that was used in earlier studies, uh, upward for inflation that had taken place between 1996 and 2010, the approximate poverty line for Barbados would be $8,000 uh, per annum. 
So there are 15% of Barbadian households who have incomes below that level. Uh, if we think about it, of course, there is a significant presence of individuals who we would identify as the working poor as well. These are individuals who are employed, but their employment does not generate levels of income in excess of the $8,000 standard. Uh, but there is also the unemployed poor. And the unemployed poor are individuals whose joblessness condition is so sustained throughout the course of the year that they're unable to meet the $8,000 standard. Uh, this situation, as, as the minister pointed out a moment ago, is it's particularly pernicious for younger workers. Uh, for 15 to 19 year olds and 20 to 24 year olds, the unemployment rate typically runs at least three times as high as the national average, which means that among younger people, the unemployment rates can run up to 40% of the youth population. Moreover, there is also the problem of the discouraged unemployed, the individuals who have surrendered the task of looking for work because prospects appear so, so grim, which means that the scope of joblessness is even, is even greater. What are the adverse effects of unemployment? Well, the most obvious is the loss of income. But the second is the emotional or, or, the emotional or psychological loss of a connection to a workplace community on a daily basis. And the third, which may be related, are the adverse mental health effects. Involuntary joblessness and psychological well-being historically have been intimately connected. But there's a uh, classic question that's been raised about this connection. It's quite, quite straightforward to assume that individuals who might have poor emotional health would be most likely to be unemployed. And so the causation need not run from unemployment towards poor emotional health, but in the other direction. But in a new study, Timothy Diet, Art Goldsmith, Derek Hamilton, and I attempted to make use of two longitudinal samples to try to determine whether or not we could isolate a specific adverse effect of exposure to unemployment on the mental health of, uh, of, of, of a number of, of, uh, of American citizens. So what we did was we tried to identify people who appeared to be resilient at the baseline year of the longitudinal study. These are individuals who reported no mental health issues at the outset of the panel. And what did we find? We found that among those individuals who reported no mental health issues at the outset, those who were exposed to unemployment were three to four times as likely to report mental health issues during the course of the period in which they were studied, particularly significant was their reports of a set of indicators of clinical depression. So there's a strong body of evidence to support the proposition that people's mental well-being suffers. 